Hey, what's up guys? Today in this video, I'm going to explain to you the war that's going on in Ethiopia in the simplest and shortest way possible so that you understand. So, as you probably know that Ethiopia has nine different ethnic regions. And that's how the country is divided up into different states is by ethnicity. And Ethiopia runs by the system called federalism, which supposedly allows the different regions to have their own language to be able to self-govern themselves. And until 2019, Ethiopia was controlled by four different parties. Those four parties would come together to make up the country. The EPRDF would be the main, that would be the parent party, and then the other four would be under it. When the current prime minister, when he came into power, he did a lot of good things such as making peace deals with neighboring country Eritrea, he freed a lot of political prisoners and privatized state enterprises. Under his ruling, he also came up with a new party called the Prosperity Party. And in order to make this party, the four different parties that previously made up the country would have to come together to make this new party called the Prosperity Party. The TPLF, which is one of the four parties, they have been controlling the country from 1991 until 2018, until the new Prosperity Party. They were not in favor of the Prosperity Party because they had a lot of influence in the making of the rules of the country. And so they didn't want to give up that power and influence that they had over the years. That's when the federal government of Ethiopia goes to disarm this party because they were not wanting to join and they were not in favor of it. In a response to an attack, according to the federal government, they attacked the TPLF because of an attack that the TPLF has made on the federal government in a military base in Tigray, which the government owns. And that's when the back and forth starts and the war begins. Now, the TPLF is so powerful that they were so close to marching on the capital of Ethiopia. That's when Abi realized how much of a trouble he was and authorized the formation of ethnic militias. And he does get saved by these ethnic militias. And one of those biggest militia groups that helped save the capital was Fano, which represents the Amhara region. In November 2022, the war supposedly ends, but the Fano group they kept fighting, and they even gained some land in western Tigray, which they claim was or belongs to the Amhara people. During negotiations with the Tigrayan people, the Amhara people were afraid that Abi might use their territorial gains as a bargaining chip with the Tigrayans. Addis Ababa, the capital city of Ethiopia, is located in the Oromo region. Even though it's in the Oromo region, it's made up of mostly Amhara people. There's a lot of Amhara people there, even though it's in Oromo region. Abi, the prime minister of Ethiopia, is from the Oromo region. He is a Muslim and a Christian. He has backgrounds of both. He can also speak Tigray, I believe. I'm not sure on that. Don't quote me on that. And also Amharic. That's originally why a lot of people liked him when he first was elected is because he had all those backgrounds, but mainly Oromo is his home. The Amhara people were getting suspicious of Avi trying to Oromize Ethiopia. And that suspicion came especially after a speech that he gave in June 2022. And one of those things that he said in his speech, which raised the alarms in the Amhara region, was despite being the largest group, Oromos have not had their fair share in political and economic space. And then continued to accuse the Amara of dominating the country's political structures. Now, this speech resonated with the Oromo people, which led to a fight breaking out in the Gimbi area and left more than 500 Amara people dead. And of course, Fano are going to see this in the broader context of Aromization. And so that's when they decide to refuse 
to fall in line with the federal government. In August 2023, Fano decided to ambush federal armies in the cities and took multiple cities. After about a week or two, the federal were able to take the cities back from the Fano group and push them into the countryside. Now, this Fano group are Amhara nationalists. They believe that Amhara should be ruling the country. And also they believe that they have been betrayed by the government by Abiy Ahmed. And that's what the war is about right now. The federal fights the Fano group through civilians. According to what a local has told me, the federal would order drones from outside the country and use those drones to strike civilians in their sleeps and whether it be at night or during the day they could be walking in the streets or just at their house minding their business the federal would use those drones to strike those innocent people children and women as it stands the war is still happening in multiple cities and even in the countryside where it's usually safer uh, but not anymore Another war you might have heard of Ethiopia is war with Somalia and that is because Ethiopia decided to make deals with Somaliland, independent country, but they're not officially independent from Somalia. And Somalia claims that Somaliland is their land. They are part of Somalia. If Ethiopia makes this deal with Somaliland, Ethiopia would be recognizing Somaliland as a as an independent country. They would be officially recognized as an independent country. And Somalia doesn't like that because they claim that Somaliland is their part of their land. So if Ethiopia makes the deal with Somaliland, then Somalia would lose Somaliland. The deal that Ethiopia is making with Somaliland is is 12 miles of land to be able to have a sea port because as you know Ethiopia is a landlocked country as of right now they pay Djibouti a lot of money it's very expensive to import and export through Djibouti so if they were able to make the deal with Somaliland they would be able to get it for cheaper and be able to have a navy as well as a seaport to import and export goods. But my question is if if Somaliland really is in Somalia, then how is Somaliland able to make deals with other countries? How do they have the power to make deals with the other countries if they are not their own countries? If anything, Somalia should be going to war with Somaliland and not Ethiopia. So obviously Somalia has no control over Somaliland. So I don't know why they're claiming that Somaliland is Somalia when Somaliland has the power to make their own decisions, control and govern themselves and make deals with other countries. They even have their own flag, which makes a country a country. That's what's going on in Ethiopia and let me know if you have any questions and let me know if I said things that were not accurate and so I can fix that and learn more from you guys. That's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.